Everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessy Chance, checking in team number 1619, world champion up a creek robotics. By the way, I'm here with uh, Olga, James, and Maya, and up a creek robotics. They've been building fantastic machines every year, but this one just very special with the world championship win. Uh, of course, we'll follow that full cargo path through the robot, talk about some odometry and more of what's gone into us, and a great climber coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for first students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Apply the skills you gain as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. We'll go start out uh, with the ball path on your robot. Talk to me about your intake. Uh, you know, my thing about 1619, you guys have always had super wide intakes every year and very robust machines. What's gone into your intake this year? And we'll follow that cargo path through. Yep, so as you said, very wide intake, and we definitely go with a we touch it, we keep it kind of mentality, and we want to be able to take in any ball that we can. And so we have a very robust collector. We are, it is very flexible in both directions, uh, which is incredibly helpful in terms of defense. So once a ball goes up, it's going to be pushed over to the side with our wheels over to our off-centered um, ball tunnel and elevator. So we have multiple bean breaks along the way that's going to help cue the robot as well as determine what color it is. So once we get to said cue, the ball is either going to get pu pulled up into our elevator or out the back. So within our elevator, we have two, our front and back are two separate gearboxes, which really helps in terms of either keeping our ball in place, in which case we spin the elevators in op the elevator belts in opposite directions, or if we want to shoot it up, they're going to spin the same direction up to our adjustable hood. Let's break that down a little bit on here, starting in the beginning of your intake. I noticed you just got like a big metal plate uh, right here in the front here. When yep. you were looking at testing, did you try like putting maybe different grips on that or did you just have aluminum that worked out for you? And then if we can see uh, maybe a couple of pieces of cargo come in too. Oh, for sure. So we tried a lot of different things. Our assembly team was incredibly helpful in terms of getting um, different types of prototyping. So we, the hardware design team and the assembly team work very closely in order to try out different different versions of each assembly. So for this, there were a lot of different spacings of each of the three rungs that we came up with, and this was the most effective. So if we can feed a ball through, it's going to come up, get pushed over. That's the wrong color getting ejected out the back. And then the correct color will get pulled up into our elevator. So those two belts are spinning opposite directions, holding it in place. And then once we are ready, it's going to come up into the shooter, which is adjustable. Um, and then shoot out once we are targeted onto the hub. So this has, um, we have a, these backing wheels, and then these, which are also connected to a flywheel down at the bottom, which help maintain the proper velocity that we want for our balls. We'll talk about uh, the climber in just a little bit here, but from a general packaging standpoint, when you approach this, this year's game, like was this always kind of the idea to have like the, the climber on one side, the shooter on the other side, that sort of thing? Yes, so we, when we started out layouting, the main thing that we wanted was to keep our climber in the center so that, it, so that we could be on whatever side of the, of the bar that we, of the hanger that we needed to be. And so that led us to an off-centered shooter, and then that left us with a center of gravity problem. Sure. So in order to fix that, we actually belted and shafted three of our gearboxes, as well as our flywheel, over to this side of the robot. So you can see that we have the flywheel, as well as our shooter and two elevator gearboxes, all over on this side to help balance it out. That's really cool to hear about that thought process that went into it on there. Uh, last question in regards to your shooter on here. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're looking at, like, uh, 
actually having the materials. I noticed there's like some grippiness back here, stuff like that. Any like changes, modifications to the season from the shooter like hood area or the shooter itself? Yes, 100%. So we did not start out with these back rollers, neither did we start out with this ball blocker over here. So as we continued, the two issues we kept having was maintaining the, making sure that both of the balls that we were shooting were of the correct velocity so that they had the right trajectory. So adding in those back rollers as well as figuring out exactly what this grippy thing in the back needed to be sure. um, was very important for us in order to get that exactly where we needed it to. So these back rollers really help maintain the two balls at the same speed. And then the um, ball stopper we added after, I believe, in between our two regionals, um, which, help, which really helped in terms of making sure that our balls were not coming out of our shooter early. And where's uh, for 69? Do you have a general sweet spot in the field? Because you shoot from all over. So like, do you, but do you have a preferred spot to go from? Um, well, I think generally since we're able to shoot from anywhere, we really try to go where, in somewhere that's helpful for our alliance partners, so that they can do what they need to do as well. But generally, around in front of the hangar is a great place sure. for us to be. And I think with you guys, your cycle times are just so fast, so you're just, your thought process is just to get it out, right? And, yes, and get it in right sure. away. Uh, let's head over to your climber. James is going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and talk to me about uh, what's gone into it. And of course, if we show a demonstration of your climb sequence, would be fantastic too. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so, of course, the big centerpiece of our robot is the climber, which uh, made it why we had to have an offset and a shooter and everything. And so our uh, climber is sort of rota rotation design and uh, has like folds out from the back so it stows nicely right in the back and middle of the robot. Um, it will raise up using two pneumatic cylinders and then latch in with these spring steel uh, latches and we can show that in the demonstration. And once we're up there, we can then use this uh, flexible um, indicator to let our drivers know where to line up on the hangar so that we don't run into the pole uh, when we're going up. And, yeah. Well, so, let's show off that climb sequence uh, and kind of narrate us through each step of the way. Sure. Okay, so here we deploy and both of our latches latch into place so that we cannot bring the structure back down in the middle of our climb. And once we start, we'll begin by climbing up to the second bar. And from there, we'll change our center of gravity and lift up to the third. And once we're on the traversal rung, we move our center of gravity one more time and release, and now we're hanging. So that down. looks all automated to me, right? <laughs> yes, it is all automated. How about what's kind of what's been your quickest climb uh, so far in Rapid React? Uh, we've had a nine-second climb that I think we got right at the buzzer in Houston, and that was so far our fastest climb. We're right oh. at the buzzer, we let go. And yeah, so cool to hear just the ingenuity that, that's gone into this. Um, when we were looking at the game uh, from going kind of, I kind of call this like a windmill type climber, right? Uh, yeah. Why was this route the best way for 1619 to accomplish what you needed? Well, we found just through our like brainstorming and designs at the beginning of the season that it would be a very simple design and we could just increase speed and keep working up as we go. And like halfway through, like we found like these latching so that we don't have to have two claws on each side. If we can just latch onto the bar, and then just release one claw, we're gonna save a bunch of time having to program each bar and each claw and then release. And so that also saved a bit of time in there and we just thought it would be easy and got us ahead of the game climb-wise. I'm not sure if I missed it, what, is, what, is, uh, what purpose does flap serve? So it's an indicator for our drivers. When in Houston we were trying to get the triple climb with 254, we used that to uh, line up against the edge of the hangar sure. so that when we climb up our motor does not smash into the wall and get sheared off. Maya, we've seen a lot of uh, code already deployed through this and stuff, so we got to break some of that down of what's gone into your robot. I know you guys are using odometry as well too, so talk to me more about that and some of the other uh, programming features that are happening with this awesome machine. Yeah, so our combination of limelight and odometry was one of the most important autonomous functions of our robot. So we have our limelight here, um, right at our shooter in front of the flywheels, but we didn't really want it on all the time, just in case we were targeting some lights that were like in the stadiums. Um, so instead, we only turned the limelight on while we were priming, when we were pointed towards the target, and then we would use uh, the values from the IMU or the pigeon to um, kind of have a rough estimate of where we were in the field. Sure. So that when we pressed our prime button, um, everything in our, uh, our drivetrain would point towards the hub, and then we would use the limelight to correct ourselves. 
Excellent. I got to ask, uh, what is uh, this? Uh, this has been something that stood out to me the whole, uh, that I just keep looking at. What purpose does this serve? Oh, yeah. So it's like an indicator for our drivers to know uh, when we are primed and when we have two balls. So we'll have a blue light on when we have collected two of okay. our own balls, and then it'll go red when we're primed so we know when to press the shoot button. So you're getting the feedback on that as yeah. it goes through. Awesome. Is there anything else from uh, when you're looking at, like, the programming that work that you've had to do with this robot, uh, is there anything that you've had gotten from a lessons learned that maybe you can give advice for other teams at all? Um, <laughs> I suppose uh, one of the things I really like that we do is we have like a whole bunch of autos that we've tested out. Um, so like here on our drive tray, our, sorry, <laughs> on our dashboard, uh, we have an auto selector so that we can like talk to other teams um, and ask them what kind of autos they have and kind of work through them so we can figure out where we want to be on the field and what works best with our other alliances. So like at Champs, uh, 254 had a really successful five ball auto. Yeah. So we let them take that part of the field and we worked with our two ball, which is now a three ball because of the rule changes um, during Champs, so yeah. Awesome. Well, 1619, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about your robot. Congratulations on World Champions, a phenomenal year by you and can't wait to see what you bring in future years as well. And good luck here at Chessie Champs. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Apply the skills you gain as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is a top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.